the state of Chiapas is about as remote from the Mexican capital as you can get. So remote that the uprising here took the government completely by surprise. This is a story about land, this land whose ownership was the chief cause of the Mexican Revolution from 1910 to 1917. Like so many other revolutions, it failed to live up to its promises. But now, improbably, its time has come again. Mexico's turbulent history is being relived by 90s revolutionaries who've called themselves after their forebears, the Zapatistas. This is Zapatista territory. Here in Morelia and in other areas under Zapatista control, the big cattle ranchers have been driven off their land. Miguel Perez Lopez is a community leader in Morelia. His enemies among the exiled ranchers say he's a Zapatista. But Miguel is not an armed rebel. It just happens the Zapatistas are fighting for the very thing he and his neighbours want, land. And now they're awaiting orders from the Zapatistas to take over the nearby ranches. The people already want to be working on the lands, but we're waiting for orders from the clandestine committee. If they give the order, we'll go to work. If the revolutionary clandestine committee give the word, is that considered to be the word of law now? Yes, yes, that's exactly it. They'll tell us what to do from here. They'll tell us if we can take the land. The army, of course, may well retaliate against this community if it takes that land. Are the people here prepared to fight for what they want? Nosotros. We're prepared for anything. They killed three of our compañeros. We're going to get rid of them by force if necessary. Less than 10 kilometers away, this military roadblock marks the border between Zapatista and government controlled territory. It's here the Mexican army stopped when a ceasefire was declared on January 11. Chiapas has remained divided since then. Just beyond the roadblock is the town of Altamirano. One of the most heavily militarized in Chiapas, this is the army's forward base. If the government decides to go back to war, it's from here they'd move into the mountains. It's also the headquarters of the dispossessed ranchers. Their leader in Altamirano is Jorge Constantino. Like most of the ranchers, he's of Spanish extraction. He's also the president of the local branch of Mexico's ruling party, the PRI, or Party of the Institutional Revolution. It's an association that helps explain how power works in Chiapas. Everybody had to vote for the PRI in the elections. In the 60s, it, uh, the antagonism uh, increased when the, uh, the uh, cattle ranchers um, uh, associate with the political party, and then the political and the economic power were in the same, in the same hands. Outside the Altamirano Ranchers Association, angry ganaderos are waiting to hear the results of a meeting with government representatives. They're worried the government is going to buy peace with their land. We have a number of demands. The major ones are the return of the stolen cattle and to stop the ransacking of our ranches, properties and communities. They've already stolen our belongings. They've already destroyed the houses on the ranches. 
Porque ganaderos ya no los hay. There aren't any cattle ranchers left here. The only cattle ranchers are Zapatist and militants. None of us have stolen what we own. That's why we want fair treatment, fair and dignified treatment. Everybody knows each other here. We know who is Zapatista and who isn't. It's not a simple problem that will be solved by saying land for the peasants. We need to raise the cultural level. We need to introduce birth control. To the peasants of Morelia, it is a simple problem. Leonardo Lopez points to the ranch's grazing land that stretches as far as you can see down the valley. We only have this hilly, broken land. Pure rocks and stones. There's no land to work, only patches where we've planted cornfields. That's where we work to get something to eat. The Zapatistas are helping the poor, the many of us who don't have land. That's what they're doing, helping the poor. We have nothing to eat and no land. I spoke to one of the ranchers 15 days ago and he asked me, Pancho, what happened to my ranch? And I told him, forget about it. Who knows if you'll ever get your ranch back. And my cattle, Pancho? The rancher asked. I said, forget about it. Morelia is the most divided of all towns. It's been like that for a long time. With a split within the community for a long, long time. All non-Zapatistas have been expelled. Los que no son zapatistas. Do you know who it is that controls the political situation in that town? ¿Saben ustedes quiénes son los que manejan la situación política ahí en Morelia, por ejemplo? De los de los mismos um, There's four or five people. Son cuatro o cinco gente. Do you want their names? I wouldn't really want to give you them. It would cause problems for me. Causa problemas. I've been threatened by them. Se amenazado por. It's a physical threat. Me perjudicarían mi mi integridad física. Off camera, he told us it would be a simple matter to solve the problems in Morelia by getting rid of those five, including his former friend, Miguel Perez. When the problem started and the army came in, my friendship with Jorge Constantino ended. Then I got to know him, his attitudes, his character. Miguel Perez knows he's a marked man. His community was split between those who remained faithful to Jorge Constantino and the ruling party, and those like himself who wanted to break away from the control of the ranchers. By now, the politics here had polarised into a pattern more familiar in parts of Central America. On the one hand, armed Zapatistas, on the other, the army and a shadowy paramilitary known as the Guardias Blancas, or White Guard. Some of the Indians who'd left Morelia had been recruited into the White Guard. When the army came here, the Guardias Blancas came carrying weapons and wearing uniforms. It was the 6th of January when the army swept into Morelia. They came with a list of suspected Zapatistas and sympathizers. Miguel Perez was on the list but managed to escape and hide in the hills. The military took the, um, all the mail from 12, 13 years um, on and put them with their faces down on the cement, uh, the person who dared to try to uh, lift their, uh, their heads or uh, kick on the head or hit with, the, uh, with their weapons. Three of the older community leaders were separated from the group. They took him in a to a little room on the side of the uh, of, of the church, and um, eyewitness of the um, of, of the torture that uh, subsequently happened in that, said that they were hit, uh, they were um, they were cut with knives, and later um, heavily bleeding. These three men were last seen uh, taken into a military ambulance. Roger Maldonado was there with a freelance cameraman the day the remains of the three disappeared were found. Hi, I'm um, Tom Crane. I'm from Position for Human Rights. Down on our left, we have a human mandible. And the representative of the village has said that this T-shirt belongs to one of the men. You have to understand that these are very poor people. They don't own many clothes. And as a result, people know what clothes they wear. 
What's this? Some uh, skull bones. This is a small rib here as well. Unfortunately, all of these bones have been torn apart by animals in the forest. And that's the church over there. They have it inside the little room with the, the torch of the three men. Um, is, that, is, is that room over there? Uh -huh. In Morelia, Maldonado returned to the widows, photographs of their husbands. <laughs> The presence of the Mexican army in the countryside has been the terror for the uh, peasants. They have been used in force, and, and they are used as a repressive force by the, uh, by the group in power. In San Cristobal, the government hoped to avoid civil war by bargaining with the Zapatistas. <laughs> Protected by the sanctity of the church, masked Zapatistas came back to the town they'd first occupied to talk terms with the government. For 10 days, they used this extraordinary public theater to address the Mexican people. Repression, displacements, killings, disappearings, torture. That has been the government response to the just demands of our people. The Mexican press has been galvanized by the story, making up with enthusiasm what they lack in technology. After 65 years in power, the party of institutional revolution is facing its most serious challenge. A great deal now hinged on the peace talks, oddly taking place in the most popular tourist town in Chiapas. Rings of military and civilians held onlookers back from the cathedral. Liberty, justice and democracy, respectfully, from the southeast of Mexico, the clandestine revolutionary committee. After ten days confined inside, the negotiators emerge with the first stage of an agreement. The media's favourite, Subcomandante Marcos, sat quietly puffing his trademark pipe, letting others take the limelight. He'd never back down from his demand that President Salinas resign. But with elections due later this year, the government promised a major overhaul of the electoral system and a considerable social package for the Indians with spending on health, education, roads and housing. Marcos and his Zapatistas left to take the agreement to the Indian communities. The government envoy, a presidential hopeful, Manuel Camacho, appeared triumphant. This is a victory of Mexico. It's not a victory of one of the parts, of one of the parties. It's something in which everybody has participated. We all made our decisions we contributed to the result up to now, but what's important is that out of this comes out a great respect for Indian communities, for the poor, and an advance in democracy in Mexico. Do you expect the government to yes, uh, In the meantime, will the ceasefire lines remain in place? Will the land continue to be occupied by the Zapatistas? Uh, in the meantime, things will be as they were, but in a much better political climate. So the occupation will continue of the land? Uh, all of this will be announced uh, when the right moment comes. Uh, this all, all, this, all this is agreed in principle, and uh, we are moving clearly in the direction of peace. Is not the land the critical question? The Mexican government's crisis management only wanted a reprieve. So in the countryside, the PRI was pulling out all stops to regain its power. <laughs> The marketplace of Oxchuk in the Chiapas Mountains. Tourists come here drawn by guidebook descriptions of traditional Indian life. But beneath the surface, nothing is as it first appears. Drive. 
This could have been a fiesta, but none of the audience applauded, nor did they smile. And behind the musicians, government buildings burnt out by the Zapatistas. In early January, Oxchuk was under Zapatista control. Now the ruling party, the PRI, are back in charge again. Gracias al esfuerzo del gobierno federal. Throughout Chiapas, local party bosses are trying to reassert their authority by digging into the pork barrel. In Oxchuk, they opened a new medical clinic. But long experience of the party system has bred a scepticism that can't simply be bought off. And now that scepticism is turning into anger. But the Indians have sensed that their revolution may succeed, and new radicalism has infected them, so that all through Chiapas in the past week, there have been land seizures and actions like this to reinforce the Zapatistas' demands. This is, in effect, the second occupation of the San Cristobal Town Hall. The first was at the beginning of January by armed Zapatistas. This time, the poorest of the campesinos they came here to support have taken matters into their own hands. They've come here without food or proper bedding. But they say they intend to stay until their demands are met. They've even set up a video of the original Zapatista uprising. The openness of Indian support for the rebels shocked many of the more conservative townspeople. But the Indians were turning the clock back, not just to the beginning of this year, but 80 years, to the Mexican Revolution. For many of these people, life has changed little since the days of their hero, Emiliano Zapata. Are you here in support of the Zapatistas? Es decir, en las demandas son las mismas, es decir, en el sentido de que la causa, la causa es que originó el levantamiento armado, es la misma causa por la que estamos aquí. Entonces, en eso coincide, aunque nosotros no somos zapatistas armados, pero las, las demandas sí son las mismas. The Zapatistas shocked the Mexican government out of its complacency by force of arms. La violencia ha rebasado los límites de Chiapas. Now the Indians are determined to show how deep-rooted the rebels' support is. The government has tried to end this indigenous uprising with promises of land and electoral reform. But if its hasty response is not followed by swift action, it risks a civil conflict that could drag Mexico down the same bloody path as its near neighbours Guatemala and Salvador. <laughs>